Welcome back to Honest News. Well, brothers and sisters, I wish I could tell you that things are going to get better. Um, but I have to stay with the Word. I've got to stay with the Scripture. And I cannot give you something that's not in the Word. I can't give you something, you know, that is something that the Word is not saying. So I have to give you the Scripture. I have to give you the Word of God. And I think the Scripture makes it very clear that things are not going to get better until they get much worse. Amen? And uh, we're going to be looking at 2 Timothy today, chapter 3, and verse 13. Let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you, God, that you've given to us the truth. That we don't have to guess. We don't have to wonder, even. We don't have to... We don't have to be deceived. If we're deceived in this hour, it's because we choose not to believe the truth. You've given to us everything we need to be successful, to overcome, even as you have overcome. You've given us all we need, Lord, to live godly in this present life. We pray that you anoint this message pierce the veil of darkness of this world, Lord. I pray that this word will be sown safely in the hearts of your people. God, that you will hasten this word to perform it, and that it will bring forth a hundredfold harvest in your people's hearts. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over this broadcast, over this whole system, the computer, the internet, everything, so that this word will make it safely to your people. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving, and being deceived. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. There's no reason why you and I have to be blind. If we believe this scripture right here, we're not expecting it to get better anytime soon. How many believe that? If you're expecting things to get better, when the scripture says it's going to wax worse and worse, I want to say something. Even if God does use this current administration, it's not because they are good men. I mean, no, God can use anything he wants to use. Amen. The heart of the king is in the hands of God. I may know that. God can use even this current administration uh, to do good, even. Okay? It doesn't mean that they're good men. And even if you went with what the Charismatics are saying today that, uh, you know, that the president is uh, a modern day Cyrus, even if you went with that idea. Remember that Cyrus was not a good man, he was not a godly man. How many know that? He was a wicked man, he was an evil man. And so, yeah, God can use. Man, he can turn uh, this whole administration to do his will and they not even know they're doing the will of God. How many know that? 
Do you think that those that are going to go against Israel, do they know what they're doing? God puts a hook in the jaws of the nations, brings them towards Israel to burn her with fire. Do you think that they really know what they're doing altogether? It says God is going to put it in their hearts, right? Do you think the ten horns that are going to burn her with fire, do you think they really know what they're doing? It says God is going to cause them to do his will. Does that mean they're going to, in some way, reap everlasting life because God used them? Listen, folks, God uses the wicked. God uses the wicked. He uses evil men. And it's always to the benefit of his own people. Amen? So if God uses this current administration, even if America was made great again, or made great for that matter, that doesn't mean that the current president is a godly man. It just means that God is using what he has to use. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Because the scripture tells us evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And if you notice, those that support this current administration, they are not doing what the next verse talks about. This is, know this, folks, that Paul the Apostle is admonishing young Timothy here. He says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. What's he talking about? that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is Christ in Christ Jesus. So Paul is admonishing Timothy to stay in the scriptures, to stick to the scriptures. And that's exactly what the charismatics don't do. They don't stay with the scriptures. They prophesy to their own hearts, out of their own imaginations, right? Look at the next verse. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So the focus here is on Scripture. Amen? And Peter also talks about a more sure word of prophecy. Amen? To take heed as a light that shines in a dark place. He is also speaking of the Holy Scripture. In this deceiving hour we're in, seducing hour we are in, if you will stay in the Scripture, if you will stick to the Scripture, and I'm not talking about translations, I'm talking about the King James Version. If you'll stay in the Scripture, the Holy Scripture. Understand, people, that if you're going to enter in to the Lord's rest in this hour, it's through labor. What is that word labor in the original Greek? It's the word study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
You've got to rightly divide the scriptures. You've got to labor in the word, studying the scriptures. Hallelujah. But I don't study without a light. I don't know about you folks, but I try to always have my lamp on when I'm studying. Without the precious Holy Ghost, without the oil, amen, we don't have a lamp to study with. You can try and study in the dark if you want to, brothers and sisters, but I'm going to choose to study with the lamp on. I've got to have more oil. Keep that lamp burning. Hallelujah. Without the oil, without truth, I can't understand the scripture. When I sit down to read the word of God, I don't sit in the dark. Amen. I turn on the lamp. Even before there was electricity, you had oil, and you had a flame. You had a lamp. Amen? And that is a type. We've got to have the oil of the Holy Spirit. We've got to have the truth to light that lamp. And how many know you, your spirit, is that lamp? Hallelujah. Don't try to study the Word of God without the lamp on. You've got to have both the oil and the truth if you're going to understand truth, if you're going to understand the Holy Scripture. Amen. These two men on the road of Emmaus, they said that did not our hearts burn within us as he opened to us the Scriptures. Amen. We need that in this hour. We need the scriptures open to us. We cannot understand the scriptures but by the Spirit. We need the, the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth. Jesus said, you search the scriptures, for in them you believe you have eternal life. You think you have eternal life because you search the scriptures. There's a lot of folks today searching the scriptures. Amen. Their motive's not right. And because they do not depend on the Holy Spirit to lead and guide them, because they don't have uh, the lamp turned on, the oil in the truth, they can't understand the scripture. Amen. Recently, I was listening to Morgan Freeman say that he, uh, he was listening to someone that was telling him the interpretation and understanding what the mark of the beast, the 666, is. Well, what business does M Morgan Freeman have anyway, even thinking that he knows what the 666 mark is? But see, it's foolishness. Because the scripture says, he that hath wisdom, let him count the mark of the number of the beast, right? And so these arrogant, self-righteous, pious, you know, when I say pious, I don't mean holy, but these that are, you know, just, just arrogant, let's just say arrogant, they think that they can calculate the number and they can figure this out. How many know that God, when he says, he that hath wisdom, that word wisdom means insight. Just like the handwriting on the wall. Amen. Belshazzar and all his magicians, his wise men, uh, astrologers, they couldn't figure it out. They didn't know what the handwriting was saying. And it took Daniel to interpret it. Just like the mark of the beast, the 666, he that hath wisdom, he that hath insight, let him calculate that number. Nobody's going to understand these things without God revealing it to them. You can hit your, set of, your head against the wall all day long. You're never going to figure it out until God reveals it. 
even the things that are written in the book of Revelation concerning the beasts and uh, the, the kingdoms, the, the horns, uh, the, the, all the different things that we read about in the book of Revelation that makes us scratch our heads. You're not going to understand those things. The whore of Babylon, uh, the woman that rides the beast, all those things. You're not going to understand those things if, it, if it's not revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you something else. If God reveals to you something in the Holy Scriptures, re- remember this. The same God that revealed it to you has got to reveal it to the people you're speaking to. You can't expect people to understand something that you did not understand but by the Spirit. You understand what I'm saying a lot right now, folks, if you'll listen. If, if God revealed it to you, you didn't understand it till God gave you understanding. You can't expect other people to understand it with their carnal mind, right? So you've got, as a minister, I've got to pray and ask God to reveal it to you. You see how the operation of prayer comes into all this? And that's why when I pray, I ask God that the Word of God be safely sown into your hearts. That's why I ask God that the Word be anointed, amen, and that that Word will be hastened, and that Word will perform, because God said His Word will not return void. It will accomplish where it was sent. And so I pray and ask God that that Word will bring forth fruit that is a hundredfold. Amen. We don't just expect the Word of God to do uh, and produce without prayer. Are you listening? Remember, it takes rain to water the seed. And the rain that waters the seed, how many know it's our tears? Amen. He that weepeth, bearing his precious seed. Amen. He that goeth, weepeth, and bearing his precious seed shall doubtless return with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves. That's what the Word of God says. It takes tears. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Amen. Brother Joseph has to weep over the Scripture. In in prayer, weeping that God's people will understand truth. Amen. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, if we're going to understand truth in this hour, it's going to be through real heartfelt prayer. It's going to take some tears, some weeping. Hallelujah. And not just on my part, but on your part. Amen. Don't expect to understand the deep things of God. Don't expect to understand truth in this hour. I don't care how much you read the scriptures, how much you pour over the scriptures. If you're not doing this with the right motive, if your heart is not in it and you're not with the right motive, don't expect God to reveal it to you because he's not going to. Not going to. God's not going to give us understanding of who the Antichrist is or who the You know, he's not going to do that if he can't entrust us with that truth. Are you listening? What is your motive if you were to ask God right now, Lord, Lord, who's the Antichrist? Or who's the Antichrist going to be? Or what is this mark of the beast, Lord? What would be your motive? Why would you be asking? So that you know something that others don't know? Hmm. That's interesting. Think about that. Why do you want to know? Why do you desire to know what that mark is? See, God's going to reveal that to those that have a pure heart, those that have uh, a right motive. Their intent, their motive is right. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's not going to reveal that to just anybody. He that hath wisdom. What does James say? If a man lacks wisdom, ask. God will give that. He'll give you more wisdom. He'll give you understanding. Everything that I understand right now, brothers and sisters, from the word of God, it was freely given to me from the Lord. 
but it wasn't free in the sense that it didn't cost me something. Amen. I had to take my time and sacrifice and I had to study God's word. Are you listening? And it had to be heartfelt. I had to pour over the scriptures with my heart and studying and longing and desiring to understand truth. Why? What's my motive? To be free, of course, and to help God's people to be free. Praise God. That's my motive is to help God's people get free so they won't, they won't be entangled with the yoke of bondage so God's people will be free when the rest of the world is in bondage to, the, to, to fear and, and uh, an, an, being anxious uh, so that God's people can have peace. God said, or Jesus says to us, peace I leave with you, right? Peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives peace, give I unto you. He said, in this world, you're going to have tribulation, right? Let's not be blind. Jesus said, in this life, you're going to have tribulation. In fact, the scripture says, we enter not into the kingdom of God, but through much tribulation. But what does the Lord say? In me, you shall have peace. So when you're experiencing tribulation, God gives you an unshakable peace when you're going through that tribulation. You're not exempt from tribulation. You and I are not exempt from hard times. You and I are not exempt from going without. You and I are not exempt from the things that even the world faces, brothers and sisters. Let's not be blind. But when we go through the trial, when we go through the hard place, when we're going through the tribulation that we're going through, God gives us an unshakable faith, an unshakable peace. Amen. He gives us joy, unspeakable and full of glory so that when we go through those things, hallelujah, that we can give God the glory so we can grow in those circumstances, in those situations. And what happens, what's happened in my experience is that my roots go deeper. I get stronger, deeply rooted. Amen. The roots go down deeper. When I'm thirsty and I can't seem to get a drink, I go deeper. Amen. My roots go deeper. I'm looking for something to drink. Hallelujah. I'm not going to perish. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to wither. Amen. The tree of righteousness that planted by the waters. Hallelujah. It's not going to wither in the time of drought, brothers and sisters, because the roots of that tree is going to find water. It's going to go down deeper and deeper until it finds water. Amen. How many know the root to all evil is the love of money? That's where the roots of the wicked are going. They're looking for money trying to make a profit. How sad. They asked Rockefeller, they said, if you could have one more thing, what would you want? He said, one more dollar. You see what his roots are looking for? Looking for that one more dollar. If a man should gain the whole world and lose his soul, what does he gain? How many have made shipwreck because of the riches of this world? How many? Are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? The money can get a hold of you. But if you're after living water, if your roots are looking for living water, you'll find it. If you're planted by the river, if you're planted by the river, listen to me. The tree can't, its roots cannot like just come out of the ground and go and jump in the river. You know what I'm trying to say? No, the roots are down in the ground and they're growing, but there's water, there's a water table there, right? And, and, the, and those, there, there's water in that river beside that tree and there's a water table. And the deeper that those roots of that tree go, it's going to find that water table. And that, and, the, and that tree is going to be strong. Amen. It's one thing to be in a place where it's dry, 
and to find water. Amen? It's a whole other thing to be planted by the river. Hallelujah. Planted by the river. And Jesus said this, and I don't know if you're going to get this or not, but Jesus said, if you have faith, the grain of a mustard seed, you would say unto this tree, be uprooted and cast into the sea. Now, in the physical, that tree will die, right? But spiritually, what would be greater than being planted and having to find water than to be planted in the water? <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is saying, I don't want you just having to search for water, looking for water. I can plant you in the living water. I can plant you in the sea of my love. I can plant you in the sea of my spirit. The Lord wants to plant us in himself, plant us in the kingdom. You understand what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? There's no drought. There's no want. Amen. There's no lack. Hallelujah. The Lord doesn't want you and I having to seek and search and trying to find living water. He wants to plant us right in it. Amen. He doesn't want us just to experience water up to our ankles, water up to our knees, and water up to our loins. Amen. Waters to swim in, brothers and sisters. Are you listening? The Lord would have you and I to be fully submerged in his spirit, fully submerged in the kingdom. Amen. To leave this world and to be translated into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Though we're in this world, we're not of this world. We're supposed to be walking in the Spirit. We're supposed to be planted in the kingdom. We're supposed to be uprooted from this world and transplanted into the kingdom of God. Amen? Where our roots Listen, if you're just a tree that's planted in this world and you're searching for living water, God bless you. But there's something greater, amen, and that's to be uprooted. If, if you let God uproot you from this world, hallelujah, and plant you in the kingdom of God, hallelujah, you'll never lack. There'll be no lack, hallelujah. There'll be no want, praise the Lord. You will have all you need and then you'll have even more because, listen, not only will you have for yourself to grow, but you'll also be producing fruit for others to eat, taste, and see that the Lord is good. What's the message, brothers and sisters? What is God saying to us? I want you to be in me. Not of me, but in me. In Christ, I want you to abide in me and my word to abide in you. Hallelujah. The Lord would have you and I to be in the kingdom with our feet still on the ground here on this earth. What would it be like if you woke up every morning in the kingdom, laid your head on your pillow every night in the kingdom? You know what it would be like? No matter what trial, no matter what tribulation you went through, you'd have peace. You'd have a peace that surpasses all understanding. You'd have an unshakable peace. Are you listening to me? You would have a joy that you yourself could not really understand. Because you're looking at what you're going through and you're saying, I'm going through all this, but yet I've got this strength, this inner strength. My inner man is strength and I don't understand why I feel so strong and why I'm not really uh, upset about this situation. And other people will look at your life and say, how come you're not troubled? How come you're not worried? Hallelujah. I'm not just a tree planted by living water, stranded, planted by the river. Just not just a tree of righteousness planted by the waters of life, but planted in the river. Planted in the sea. Planted in the kingdom. 
planted in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Jesus said the kingdom of God does not come in observation. It's within you. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Why is it that God's people do not live and abide in the kingdom of God? Why? Most don't even understand what it is to live in the kingdom. They're just getting by, doing their best. And they don't understand there's a surrender. Where you're uprooted from this world and replanted in the kingdom of God. If you don't understand that, pray. Ask God for understanding. It's not for the natural man to understand. These things are spiritual. If you're going to understand these things, it comes by the Spirit. Much of what I'm sharing with you, I'm sure you can't even understand or grasp right now, but you that are spiritual, you that are spiritual can discern the things that I'm saying to you. But to the natural man, to the carnal mind, those out there that are in the natural, you know you can't understand what I'm saying. It's like going over your head. But you that are spiritual, you know what I'm saying. Amen? There's something more than just trying to live for Jesus. There is living in the kingdom, in the Holy Ghost, in the Spirit. In Him we live We move. We have our being. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. When you look at the charismatics, what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring God's kingdom on the earth, trying to take over the government, trying to take over the the companies, trying to take over everything. That's no different than what the Pharisees wanted to do. How many know that? But we're not interested in that, are we? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Let that sink in. My kingdom is not of this world. He said, you are from below. I am from above. Hallelujah. How do you live? How do you abide in the kingdom while you're still on the earth? How do you walk in the spirit? How do you do it? Through faith, brothers and sisters. Through faith. You've got to receive more faith. The more faith you have, the more understanding you have, the more light you have, it comes with understanding. You see, God has to give you understanding he has to give you knowledge to give you understanding so that your faith can grow so you can walk by faith and not by sight amen so you can walk by the eyes of faith so you can see clearly hallelujah in the kingdom The Bible says it's not meat and drink, right? The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But what is it? It's peace, joy, righteousness in the Holy Ghost. The things which are spiritual are spiritually discerned. Amen. Paul said at a time that you should be teaching. He says, you, you have need that one teaches you all over all again, teaches you from the first things. He said, I was going to feed you with some meat. He says, but I can't feed you with meat. You can't even understand the milk. He said, you, you're yet carnal. He said, I fed you with milk. He says, but you can't handle the meat. You can't handle spiritual things. Recently, I heard Parsley saying to his listeners or to his congregation, he was saying, I've given you milk and you're having a hard time with that. How are you going to understand philosophy? Well, the meat of God's word is not philosophy. How many know that? Amen. No, no, no. 
It's not philosophy. The meat is understanding spiritual things. Amen. Understanding the things of the spirit. Understanding how to apply the truth to your life. Stay tuned. We're going to be sharing some more with you to help you understand. But I will tell you, you got to grow, people. If you think you're going to understand spiritual things, the deep things of God as a babe, you're not. You've got to develop. You've got to grow up. God bless you.